happening today we are learning from some of the very very great games okay. capablanca has enjoy and we'll be trying to just read the statements from black we'll try well like from the right side of the board and we'll try to understand what is the demand of a position and then we'll be trying to implement it okay as simple as that key things you have to always remember when you study capablanca number 1 he tried to make sure that every single piece is utilized to its maximum potential that is number one rule of capablanca and games that he made sure every single piece is getting the maximum potential uh, usage on the board number two capablanca will make sure that he creates double weaknesses you know the principle of double weakness which we have done way back in the classes and uh, it happens in lot many games of capablanca that he creates not just one but two weaknesses number 3 is how by the time he tries to activate his pieces he makes sure that opponent pieces are not so super active so it is black to play in this case and the whole idea is white is a pawn we are having three against two and some minor piece in game knight versus bishop so capablanca was playing this position here and we are solving everything like these are i guess nine positions will be solving together at the same time and we'll try to understand how can we make all the right moves if we can so it is white sorry black to play and what are the candidate moves we can do so first of all whenever you try to understand any end game you try to look for some candidate moves yeah so what are the optional moves that can be made on the board so first of all maybe we can do some king moves 1 2 3 4 like this then uh this pawn should not be moved at all a bishop can move somewhere i don't bother maybe so these are the couple of squares for the bishop okay so you have to try to eliminate most of the options because the bishop is already getting the best it can right because the bishop is controlling these diagonals it's protecting the backward pawn everything is fine okay it's controlling this square regarding the king how the king will participate in the game so the point is pawns are on both sides of the board pawn is towards center at the same time pawn is on the flank and the king is on the opposite side literally on the opposite side of the board so maybe capablanca will try to improvise the king here it's black to play also guys that you will i would appreciate if you can answer me in the chat in the chat box so make sure in today's class you'll be very active in the chat box how can we improvise the situation here so shadak has suggested king to g4 but what do you want to achieve with that king to g4 attacks the knight that's fine suppose if knight f3 and how do you try to improvise so like taking this path will so king g4 king h5 yeah that's what i'm saying this this path is way 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 long it's like you're taking the whole circle here it's like it will take a lot of time to reach towards this side So there's a very interesting way i can see that can be played here in this pawn is free like this knight takes yeah sir knight then then king to f4 yeah that looks good so you're sacrificing a pawn to get activity so that is capablanca's main theme whenever you try to understand capablanca only but but king can go to b3 king can go to d3 then it's completely fine no you can just take the knight he'll take the bishop you can take the pawn and now this pawn is a passed pawn okay so pawn f3 he takes king f4 he goes there all right so now we take the pawn after this he gives me a check okay now again my king is centralized i'm still up a pawn so maybe i want to grab this guy so again if you try to think 
how do you go away with the check this guy he's on the distraction kind of you are under check right now so you are having couple of choices with the king so king to d is fine but king to uh, the uh, d uh, d5 d5 okay now see remember the three rules that i started the class with number 1 capa blanca will make sure that his pieces are utilized you know at the maximum it means his pieces are super active that's number 1 number 2 he'll make sure that he create double weaknesses double weaknesses for the opponent means creating this guy as a passer and maybe this guy as a passer number 3 while maximizing his own pieces capablanca will make sure that he is not allowing opponent's pieces to get activity it means he is not allowing this guy to get active so suppose if you go king d5 directly you are maybe allowing king e3 you go here and now you are allowing something like king to e4 or maybe king d3 so it gets slightly tricky okay sir so we will go king f4 king f4 king f4 i am not so sure king f4 is again so this not making progress yeah so it's king f4 not making progress so here you have to try to win the pawn which is slightly loose but in a way that this guy doesn't get activity d5 d5 then e3 d4 i mean d4 so king d4 d4 then f3 maybe or maybe just e2 so um after d5 can we like play um c4 and then take the pawn so i think the correct move is d3 because you still come towards D five, but you should not allow any counter play. So D three, I guess, is a better move, not D four. Sir, you could, yeah. I was also thinking, in the D three was the move after yeah. a couple of. D three is a better move. You not allow counter play. See, now he is not able to come towards this side, so that that is still fine for you. This because this guy is already protected. Now you go C four. That's fine. And now he goes here, and you have to just protect yourself. Not allow any counter plays. So bishop goes here, protect the pawn, and centralized. Okay, so centralized. Yeah. He goes here. That's totally winning. You try to kick the knight, and now you fork the knight and the pawn, and after this, this is completely game over. And now you can just start push. And okay, check. If we just go to some square, so you can go up. Next lesson. All right. So now we are again playing as white. This time we are in a rook pawn end game. Remember the three principles of end games of Capablanca, especially. He will make sure every single piece is utilized till the maximum. At the same time, he will make sure opponent pieces are not utilized till their maximum. And the third point uh, is principle of double weaknesses. So you have to focus on three points whenever you think of his end games. This was again played by Capablanca. with the white pieces what do you think about this position what does white want to improve here what is the yeah. one thing king white sir white has blocked off opponent king so white has taken one advantage it's uh, opponent king can't and yeah. do anything we are okay. uh, uh, so sir or the sec sir there is also one thing white wants to achieve yeah sir his rook won't be able to sir his rook equal Oh, rook okay. is tied down, yeah. Rook is tied down. He is yeah, yeah, tied yeah. down to the pawn. Rook is tied down, so he won't get to do anything. So king and king and rook are tied down. Makes sense. But Completely makes sense. But king is also tied down. Exactly. So now sir, you have to figure out a way. Sir, and if our rook tries, to, uh, sir, and if our rook tries to help the king, like doing his is. Uh, if our rook does anything in else of this file, also then, and the other king will be able to escape. Right. So the rook and should also, not move. And also, if he moves off apart from that square, even then he then the, the then the rook and king will be free. Okay. So, Makes sir, sense. So all our pieces are pinned down. Yes. So now we have to think of how do we get our king in the game. This method will take you like thousand years. 
So this method is very long. While we are doing that, they'll already make a queen and they'll just uh, exactly. So you should understand that they are already having some pressure. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a nine move plan. They only have a four move plan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. F five looks the most tempting option, right? But the point is, you understand. This is your backward pawn. So what he can do is he can just take. And now if you try to take his pawn, now he goes f4. If you take and now suddenly he has passer. He has a passer, an unstoppable passer. If king tries to stop, we'll he'll take another pawn and it will be and then and the there will be another pawn. And if he tries to stop with our rook, he'll just take our pawn. Then quietly, quietly. Wait, wait, good for Yes, enjoy. But sir, if you go, uh, if I we take uh, then, um, uh, and, uh, this issue is, uh, is it possible to just ignore and, and keep trying to push the pawn? No, because this guy, king, is already stopping you. So he is his pass on the... On the... Still, I don't think so it would work. Because this pawn is very fast. The moment this pawn becomes comes here, it, it becomes very dangerous because the rook is supporting it and you don't want to allow... Remember, you don't want the opponent to become happy with the pieces. Right now, opponent is not super happy with the pieces. So you should not allow counter plays. So in the chat, what should be the idea? King to g3 is... I guess king g3 is better, but what's the idea, Shadak? King g3, what do you want with that? After black moves, um, the, the black does not have any moves. Correct. You can only move just, the king. Yeah, I suppose I just wait randomly. Now, what, what's your main plan? And then it's kind of drawish. No, that's the whole thing. It's not drawish because if you are able to improvise the king, this is completely collapsed position for black. Black doesn't have a single counterplay apart from the h1 i don't even believe h1 is the because i always say h1 are the worst h1. Ones. Only remove that so what was black's previous move i am not so sure what was black's previous move because this is the position what we have got from the computer so king g3 but what's the main issue like how do you want to activate the king from g3 because it, if it was h5 then we can do on the oh no no, no it's not h5 I can click on the king, it won't work. See? The pawn is not able to take. So you have to figure out a way how do you activate the piece. And this is something you should spend your time in thinking. So let's play king g3 for a moment. The whole idea will be I'll go here, he take, and now just king f4. Oh, sir, I was. So I was thinking in f f five I take pawn takes king g king g three but then I thought what would be the use of that he has a passer he can toast he has as a passer but All the right. point is h pawns are the worst pawns so this passer is not so dangerous because it's not connected but these passers were way too dangerous because first of all the uh, rook was uh, behind uh, this pawn uh, chain uh, and second of all. Uh, this pawn was connected with the other pawn. So that's why this past pawn, the utility of this past pawn is much, much more than the utility of the corner past pawn. Corner past pawns are just not, not so important. So obviously we should not exchange rooks. We are trying to win the end game. So we just take the pawn. Free pawn is offered. Let's take it. And now he's trying to make queen. So we have to deal with this. So, so yep. rook to h6. Rook to h6 is a decent move because there's no rook h7, so I can just play it. Maybe, probably, I guess that's, yeah, that's good. He goes here. Now, what are we trying to do? Do we try to win the pawn? Do we try to win this guy? What do we do? Take the h4 pawn. Take the h4 pawn. I guess we can do that. And time for next lesson. So, only thing what you wanted to learn from the previous example was how do you make the king active? So, you can see Capablanca can try to sacrifice a pawn chain just for one move yeah. to break the structure. Let me let me complete for there. 
Capablanca sac can sacrifice one pawn to break the pawn chain. And once the structure is broken, what happens is then he tries to get activity. This has happened in the first position when we were trying to solve. It again happened in the second position that we have solved. Uh, yeah. So, also, there are two pawns attacking. There are two pawns and a rook that are you that can be useful uh, um, uh, uh, that are uh, are very useful because knight e4 okay yes enjoy anything that you want to add so knight e4 so f sub f2 and the checkmate so it is a oh, very it won't be a checkmate directly f knight e4 i can play rook to f1 Rook two f one and knight f knight f two king g one knight at knight at three king h one and push the pawn on up one step. Oh, the moment you push the pawn, you give me the space to run here. Oh, so then instead of that, we. Well, oh, can we also play like a pawn to two and? What's that? Pawn f two. I don't think so. It works because then you allow Let's the king to get after it. Yeah. So here, actually, sir, you have to checkmate the sir, white I don't king. Think, sir, I don't think we should. Uh, we can. We should or can let him take the f three pawn because that the f three pawn. On is is uh, trapping him, um, and his rook and pawn are also trapping him. We need to, to give him a check. Yes. Uh, X that will uh, um checkmate him. So this looks uh, good. Like, like here, a here, here. This is good. You know, you can create a smaller checkmate tactic here. So his rook on yes. his rook is placed over here. So if we imagine the rook is placed over here, and your knight is placed over here. Your rook is here. How can you imagine? A so you mate? want to play the rook on g1 like this. Yes, sir. So the rook takes and then after knight f2 checkmate. So we okay. can make the move knight to e4. That looks good. Knight e4 rook f because everything is forcing. Yeah, we create a threat and everything is forcing. So knight e4, knight f2, knight h3, and now we have to go rook to G2 with the idea of rook to G1, he takes and then smothered. Oh, sir, I missed that. Okay, so rook G2. I that. And whatever move he does, rook G1 yeah. and smothered. Now, why F2 pawn was so important in this position? Let me just close it. Why F2 pawn was so important? Because, sorry, F3 pawn was so important. Covering because... the escape square, which was G2. Uh, so... 100%. Exactly. So it's covering the escape square. The moment you try to push, so you have to understand, first of all, that you were down a piece throughout the game. Okay. So <laughs> when you are down a piece, you cannot just try to make a uh, like exchange material mm -hmm. or something. You have to just. So we have to try to resources. trap the king. So it was a trap position. So it was equal. So it yeah. was, even though we were down, we were winning. Yeah. Winning. Now let's take this position. It is black to play, and there's something <laughs> weird about this position. First of all, it's bishop versus knight endgame, and usually it is said that uh, in when pawns are on both the flanks, like on queen side, on the king side, usually bishops are powerful than the knights, which is true in some sense. But only here, if you don't do much, if you allow the bishop to get central centralized over here, pawn goes to a4 like that. And the bishop gets some activity maybe at some point. So the whole idea is this bishop cannot find the entry point on your pawn chain, you know, because all your pawns are on dark squares, which are potential attacking points for the bishop. But the whole idea is the bishop is not finding activity. So maybe he wants to come like this, that, this, that, and take, 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 take. But it will take a lot of time. So it is black to play. You think the knight is active, right? But the king is not super active. Even though your knight is active, it doesn't have any single square 
to get entry it yes. can come back like this and that but it will also allow some counter plays from the opponent <coughs> So none of our pieces are allowed to get in their camp, and yeah. only they have one piece that can get in our camp. Yes, so actually but the solution. Black, but sir, it is black to move, so we can stop them from going head bishop head six. Yeah, but I guess you should focus on a better one than this plan. Bishop h six is fine, but there's a stronger. Thing what White wants to do here. Um, the way the answer is, is a four. Yeah, the answer is a four because you see, there's a way to this destroy the structure. Let, the let me explain. Let me explain because there's a way to destroy the structure. The moment you go a four here, he cannot play up because c four is also hanging, and the moment he takes c four hangs anyways. So a four we'll start with. And then knight c4. And now suddenly we have destroyed the structure. These pawns are double pawns, and we have connected pass pawns. That's the difference we have created right away, just by one single move. Okay. So now again the knight is under attack. And look at and now compare the knight versus the bishop. See, this knight is kind of putting pressure on the pawn. And the whole idea with this is the bishop can not leave this diagonal. Bishop can also not play bishop b2 to activate because the knight is just jumping around and taking it. Bishop cannot leave the diagonal like bishop h6 because we just take. And we are way too fast in promoting. But right now, the king is trying to take us. So Capablanca will now focus on bringing the king to d5, okay, in a way that we don't get our knight cut. So we don't have to blunder anything. So what can we do is we can try to give him a check back because yes. it's also a fork. So he'll again go here. So maybe then... a check. And now he goes back. So you have to imagine that eventually the knight will again sit on c4. But instead, the king from being on f like being on f5, you want it to be on d5. King e6, king d5, exactly. yeah, good knight job. c5, 4. Good job. Good job. So this is the right plan. Okay, so knight c5 anyways. So on my mistake, knight c4 anyways. And now what we have achieved in this maneuver is it is a similar thing. Nothing has been won for free, but the structure for white has been collapsed. Now the knight is way too better than the bishop. The bishop can never move here. And now there's a way to play this position. You know, uh, you have to force white into Zugzwang. And how can we force white into Zook Swang? First 95 and then H5. So what's the catch here? He cannot play this because we have knight here. He cannot go here because we have knight C4. Okay, so now H5 makes sense. Uh, now what do we do? We go H4. Or maybe just king somewhere. Yeah? King, king somewhere. But after this, he allows this. After after this move, he's under Zugzwang, isn't it? Is he not under Zugzwang? But he has king f4. Wait, wait, wait. So we won't we don't want to make any mistakes. So knight here, but bishop comes. So only the whole point is the bishop cannot move it's right now. So, so king f4 is not possible because knight to d3, 4. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Then h4 is fine. Yes, yes, yes. That that was the only thing. Yes, that's good. Good job, Chadak. All right, so that was a tough one, actually. That was not so easy to figure out why, you know, one move was better than the other. That was really tough. Okay, now let's see what is going on in this position. Okay, one thing is very sure that this guy is the main deal that you have to look for. And uh, what I can see is, again, okay, so what should be white's move? White to play. It's... So B4 looks so obvious, B4 looks very obvious because now you have understood the way to destroy the structure, yeah? Yes, sir. It's good job. B4, then you, know? you can take the D pawn and then just stop. Oh. So the whole point is my king will be in the zone to stop both the pawns, right? But suppose if I am having passed pawn over here and over here, now his king will be not so comfortable to stop my passed pawns. That's the whole theme. I hope you guys are understanding. So now, because yes. we have seen Capablanca's game so much, 
we can understand that b4 is very tempting isn't it so let's calculate one time let's not go wrong so b4 he takes i'm kind of still fine i want to go maybe a5 or g4 g5 and after takes we take he take we take and if he tries to push i go here if he tries to push i go here if he tries to push i go take if he tries to push i go there if he tries to push i go here and now my pawns are over here and here and he cannot stop let's 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 play b4 okay all right we have a pass pawn so now g5 first or a5 first that should be very clear g5 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 i vote for g5 G5, you so because of G5, because of the G5, then uh, we the king will be saying on the on the king side that the, there is some pawn fight yes, happening. We... When the king comes that side, we can push the a pawn. So, so, so if we go a5, I will then yeah. uh, our opponent can take our our a4 pawn but that's that that's the thing that's the thing the moment he goes on c file anywhere doesn't matter i now go g5 it's more powerful because now if he takes i take he takes i take and now he cannot chase both the pawns one pawn is here other pawn is here the king is just useless i want to create okay. a distraction i am very tempted to play if i what about the class what about strinjo and krishna what about you guys so gurpat and shadaka Tempted to play this e5 idea, and I'm kind okay, of more. Okay, sir. I vote for that now that you said that. Okay. Focused on e5 because my whole 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 point is based on this to distract this guy and then go g5. That's my sir, whole. Idea. I agree with you about distract this guy and then to g5. Sir, I vote for the same thing. I vote okay. for distract the king. I, I I guess even g5 wins to be honest. Like g5 takes takes. Yeah, I vote for g5. Takes Most takes and now. If he sir, if he goes this one. way, b6, we now go a5, and he has That's to make fine. a move. I'm not so sure what he will do. Suppose he goes c, and now I I guess every move is winning here. By the way, okay, a5 is correct. Once that second, okay, now distraction. So g5 takes 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 takes. Oh, okay. Oh my goodness. So we have seen this, right? We want to play king to d3 at the right time. And now, what's this? Okay, so now what do we do? We make pass. Any move is winning, by the way. It doesn't matter what Capablanca played here in this position. G six wins, A six wins. I guess A six can be played. So what is the computer showing? Yeah, A six is also winning. You know, this is fine. Capablanca played G six in this position, maybe. But even if you play A six, this is also winning. So that that you don't have to worry about too much about this move because this is also winning. He played G six. That's fine. Takes takes, and now 